Hi, my name is Dr. Rakesh Jalali. I am currently the medical director and the head of the department of radiation oncology in Apollo Proton Cancer Center in Chennai. Now, there are at the moment, because there is a constant evolution and revolution taking place in the cancer treatment arena worldwide and globally, so among the three or four things which have kind of captured the imagination of both the clinicians and the scientists and also patient advocates and families are three or four things which I like to, to elaborate. Number one is this increasing recognition of what is called immuno-oncology. And immunotherapy has taken the world by storm and we are recognizing the potential of it, especially with the new uh, technology, with the new discovery of the immunotherapy molecules. In fact, person who actually described the immune checkpoint inhibitors, Dr. Jim Allison won the Nobel Prize this year for medicine. So we are also recognizing that it is not a panacea for every single patient or every single tumor. So there are some indications which are very good for immunotherapy and there are some which we are still working on. In terms of surgery, robotic surgery has played a very big role in terms of minimal access and also improving the local control and, and a radical eradication of the cancer cells. Third, what is called personalized medicine. Increasingly, we are recognizing that every single patient and two different tumors behave completely differently. And that is because the genetic and molecular profile of every patient and of every tumor is completely different from other person. And now it is almost, almost unethical to treat many solid cancers and hemological malignancies without knowing the full molecular and genetic landscape or profile of that person and then institute the most optimal therapy that is available to us at the moment in the world such that you improve the survival and cure but also minimize the late side effects. And local control of the cancer, one is the metastasis, but local control is also increasingly being recognized being an important pillar in the long-term cure and survivorship of many of these patients with cancer. And in that regard, local control is done either by surgery but also radiation. Radiation for the last more than 100 years has been used in the treatment of cancer. It is an increasingly important integral component of cancer treatment. And there has been a tremendous technological indications and advancements and sophistication in the radiation field itself, especially for the last 15 to 20 years. What we generally conventionally in most parts of the world we use radiation therapy and I'm a radiation oncologist so I can tell you is with the help of what is called electromagnetic radiation in other words called photons or x-rays and there are linear accelerator machines which drive this and we have become very very conformal these days with the help of techniques like intensity modulated radiotherapy IMRT we do image guidance for them such that we deliver the radiation to where we have to deliver without delivering too much dose to the surrounding tissue. At the same time, however, we are recognizing that in spite of all this technical advancement in photon world, there are many instances in spite of delivering such techniques, invariably there is a collateral damage to the healthy normal tissues. And that can either limit the dose that we have to deliver a particular tumoricidal dose to have an effective and durable long-term tumor control, or unfortunately, even if you control it, patients after seven years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, have significant side effects of radiation, which unfortunately as compared to say chemotherapy or systemic therapy, tend to be irreversible. So they, the people actually just live with them. And that is a huge issue and that is very close to my heart that it is not only the survival, but it is the quality of survivorship, which is important. In the last 10 years, there has been almost like a revolution in proton beam therapy world. And there has been such significant technical advancements in terms of the whatever problems that we had in the past, especially with techniques like pencil beam scanning. We also have now image guidance and several techniques such that it is now relatively easy to implement it. And in that regard, actually, India has done the most appropriate thing. And I'm very happy and glad to share with all the people, my viewers, who are watching this program. In, the, in that, that we kind of waited for about five, 10 years till the West kind of sorted out all the technical glitches. And we found out now this is the opportune time because it's kind of a plateau or although in science there is never ever, there's always so many more things to do. But it seems very likely that we have a plateau and hence was the most appropriate time to introduce uh, proton beam technology 
to our lands or our nation such that people from this country can benefit from this treatment as well. I'm associated with the Apollo uh, Cancer Hospitals and it is to the vision and to the dynamism and foresight of our chairman, Dr. Pratap Reddy, who for five years ago took this decision to bring this technology to, the, to, the, to India. And again, we have what we say in our, in our parlance, there is a proton and there is a proton. And the proton therapy that is being instituted in, in Apollo Proton Cancer Center in Chennai will be the first one in not only in India, but entire South Asia. It, as, as far as from the entire Middle East up to Australia and up to you know, the countries like the nearest one will be in China and Japan and Korea. And there are a few centers, of course, in Europe and the US. So in Apollo Proton Cancer Center, which is going to start hopefully by the maybe by the end of the year, we have almost for the last three, four years working on it. We have almost achieved what we have to achieve. Now it is being evaluated by the Atomic Energy Regulatory Board. We have a number of patients already planned. We have already two or three fantastic international collaborations from the scientific and service point of view. And there will be a lot of academic research as well because it's a growing field. We believe we have put processes in place such that every single person, every single patient, every single treatment plan that we generate would be a gold mine for the doctors and physicists and engineers to learn, would be prospectively captured in databases such that there will be a constant audits and repraisals such that we can share this knowledge and information with the who's and who's in, including in the world such that we learn from each other. As we know, world is now in a kind of a global platform and people can talk digitally through media like you such that we share this information. And finally, uh, the today's meeting, the Proton Therapy Cooperative Group, which is the first PTCOG uh, group meeting Apollo, uh, along with Apollo Proton Cancer Center, which is happening in Chennai. 538 delegates from 30 countries are attending it. The chairman of PTCOG, uh, Dr. Jay Flans from Mass General, he said he's amazed and unbelievably thrilled as to the response to this system is probably the best ever PTCOG they have ever had. And this gives us a lot of pride and satisfaction. So finally, I request you that you uh, we will like you to uh, join the forces together both at a societal level but also to the physicians and the doctors and the nurses and all the media and whosoever is a is a stakeholder in the journey of a cancer patient family such that we ensure that not only they are cured but they live in the society as anyone else lives from an ethical and moral point of view which they are totally deserved. Thank you.